I saw Legend of Tarzan and Charlie. You saw Purge Election Year. Election Year. Oh, the third edgiest uh, Purge movie of them all because it's so topical. Yeah, that's true. Let's see who wins. (laughs) Are you ready for movie versus? Welcome to Movie Versus, the podcast where we pin two terrible movies in an all out for the best of the worst. Here are your hosts, Tyler Lamb, Charlie Pixley, and Steve Shannon. All on Movie Versus! What's up, world? This is Movie Versus. My name is Tyler Lamb. This is the podcast in defense of bad movies. I'm joined by my co-host Charlie Pixley. How's it going, Chuck? Pretty good. I'm ready to purge. Yeah, and uh, and and we also have uh, our new since you know Steve passed away. Well, recently. yeah, I I meant to tell you how he died. So oh. remember, he gave me those poisoned cookies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how can I forget? Those found their way back out of my body, and I repurposed them again. And added double the poison. Oh, well, and hey, there you go. He might have taken them to, you know, on his vacation with them and never returned. I'm All not right. saying that that was what happened, but it's uh, a possibility. That's what happened. Oh, okay. Um, and taking his <laughs> you place, <heard> first. <laughs> taking his place permanently is uh, Sam Pixley. Sam, how's it going, Sam? Good riddance, is okay. what I say. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is and the Pixley brothers. Like, we got a real. Is this a Matt Damon? Who's Matt Damon and who's Heath Ledger? Or is this more of a is this brothers? more of a Mark Strong Sasha brothers? Baron Cohen type relationship? Nah. <laughs> what are they brothers in? In the Brothers Grimm. Oh, I thought you were saying the Grimsby brothers. Brother yes, Grimsby. to both of those. Yeah, I, I, then I went into <laughs> yeah, I, I went straight into the Grimsby joke right afterwards. I'm yeah. a good looking one. So, uh, I mean, it's Matt Damon and Heath Ledger. Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. He can be good looking, handsome when he's not like dressed. When is that? I don't know when he's just normal looking. I feel like yeah. When is that? I don't know. He yeah uh, no. When he goes to award shows, maybe as a normal person. Wasn't there an award show where he like stuck his junk in Eminem's face? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was yeah, playing. Dude. He was yeah, playing. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> whoa, wait, whoa, what was it? All what right, was guys. Oh, I'm whoa. Back. I drug myself out of the coffin that Charlie put me in after poisoning me, and now I'm back. So you're gonna have to disregard all the dirt all over me. Those that are just crawled out of the shallow, shallow grave. <laughs> wow, this is a uh, this is a pretty intense beef you guys have, just trying to kill each other over and over again. Apparently, I I thought it's, Charlie. It's succeeded. bound to happen again soon. Well, I mean, I, it doesn't affect me, so I guess welcome back to the podcast, Steve. Right. Uh, Sam, should but I, should I go? Well, you no, should, Sam, you should leave. Sam, you said no one wants you here except for maybe your brother and also Tyler. So maybe I should go. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam, didn't you see? You saw Purge election year, didn't you? I did. I did. Oh, so that just disqualifies him from. Uh, um, from actually, this. I just wanted to throw a little twist in there with you. Uh, had nothing to do today, so also saw Legends of Tarzan. Oh, oh, oh wow. it's called Legends of Tarzan. Legend. Oh. Sorry, Tarzan. Legend of Tarzan. Oh okay. oh, okay. Well, well, interesting. I, w- I will say that I'm very happy to hear that you guys chose non-comedy because I actually saw Ghostbusters this weekend. Oh yeah, how was that? I actually didn't think it was that bad. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sam uh, recently saw that as well. If I, I mean, yeah. he's just seeing movies. Yeah, I saw Ghostbusters. Too. Too, and it was uh well oh yeah <laughs> jokes on you guys i had a prophecy about a dystopian future recently <laughs> oh my god so you're going to be writing a movie <laughs> no that's all <laughs> oh okay well uh <laughs> since steve is is back um from the dead which you know whatever is it's i guess a common occurrence uh y- you can just go ahead and take the reins of this because we're convincing you so yeah, it sounds sounds good uh so since since we have two people here who have seen the Purge. I'm gonna ask Charlie first. Give me, give me the short synopsis of the Purge. Sam, you chime in if you think of anything, yeah. or or just sit there quietly. Sure. The Purge is when the government says "fuck it" for 12 hours, and you can do whatever you want: murder, rape, yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. And I didn't yada yada over the best parts. Okay, clearly. good. So like Christmas say. for adults. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve. Actually, I think the we'll movie. be checking in. <laughs> yeah, in the movie they say this is Halloween for adults. Yeah, not Christmas though. <laughs> okay, I mean I'll take it. 
So in this third one, there's a senator who's strongly against the purge. Her family was killed in the purge a few years ago. And her whole platform, she's running for the presidency. She wants to end the purge. But they institute a new rule this year because the established powers that be said, originally you couldn't kill politicians in the purge. They were the only group that had, you know, the special clause so you can't affect them. And now they said, nope, this time everybody's fair game. Even the president himself, you can go and cap him if you want. <laughs> Gee, <that's- laughs> yeah, it's pretty hardcore. So the movie revolves around Crossbones trying to defend her. And this is the actual character. This is this ties into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought so. And protect her for the 12 hours so that she can make it through the night because she's on track to win. Is there is there a clock in the bottom corner that just constantly ticks down to see how long we have left? Unfortunately, no. no, no. This isn't a Justin Timberlake movie. <laughs> Or C- I mean, CTU can't, can't we sounds. <laughs> Always. So there's also white supremacist neo-Nazis that are all decked out. They all have the ghost face masks from Modern Warfare 2 with the skull teeth on. Nice, which, nice. When everybody has, it looks pretty stupid. <laughs> but yeah. they're fighting then uh, all black gang members, too. It's just a full-out race war, too, throughout the movie. And she has Very to survive. Yes. Very <laughs> yeah, exactly. She has to survive through that to the end of the night. So that's like a general plot summary yeah. of what happens. All right. Ty, you wanna wanna hit me with Tarzan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um so it starts out with uh, see this movie. How closely does it follow the Disney film? Well, see, it, not very closely because it doesn't. Um, no it's called gross. it's called Legend of Tarzan, but it's more of a story after the le- that whole like him growing up in the jungle. So it's it's okay. it's an adult Tarzan, um, and every now and then you get a flashback of. Uh, what happened to him growing up, you know? So it's it's stuff like that, and he's so rather with... than like an intro montage of his full growing up, it's flashbacks. Yeah, kind of like uh like Man of Steel. Okay, like how Man of Steel went back every now and then to his uh, childhood. Oh, that um, movie sucks. <laughs> yeah, seriously, worst movie ever. Um, but he so it starts out something about him like oh, uh, Christoph Waltz wants this uh these diamonds, and this dude's like, I'll give you the diamonds if you give me Tarzan. And so Tarzan ends up going with uh, Samuel Jackson to. Do we know why he wants Tarzan? No, not not until okay. later in the movie. Um, so Christoph Waltz, not I mean Tarzan and Samuel Jackson and Margot Robbie are like, let's all go to Africa. Um, he runs into some tiger cubs, and the, and starts like hugging them. And Margot Robbie's like, he knew them since they were little babies. And uh, it's then like that Samuel video Jackson's online. like, "Thanks, <laughs> yeah. they're lions, and you knew them since they were cubs." Yeah, that's, that's, he's he's right. He's it's right. It's much more powerful that way. Yeah, and I, then thank you, Sam. <laughs> and then and so then uh, Bones and Spock are stuck together, and they you know their relationship doesn't really match. So you know Bones is always being an asshole to Spock, and that's always pretty funny. Wait, did you and see it, Star Trek? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw <laughs> I saw Star Trek on Sunday, and after I saw yeah the. Are, but My you bad. also watch Bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the TV. I watched the whole series Bones. So that's all. All of these are kind of meshing together, you know. I, it was it was a busy. No, but weekend. but was it was it just the same actors from Star Trek in Tarzan? Are you really? <laughs> no, uh, that was that was the movie Star Trek Beyond. Yeah, that was okay. Uh, now that we're back on track, let's go. <laughs> so Samuel, okay, yeah, the one with Margot Robbie. Okay, um. Then there's like uh, he meets the man. This movie <laughs> is very. What you're telling me is this movie was completely overwritten by Star Trek. <laughs> then, uh, then Boreanaz <laughs> finds the final clue. <laughs> uh, they so basically he meets the tribe. He reunites with the tribe that he like grew up with or whatever, and Margot Robbie grew up with, I guess. And uh, they're like, oh, it turns out that. Uh, this guy that wants Tarzan dead, um, Tarzan killed his son. So you're immediately like, okay, well, Tarzan's a piece of shit. Uh, but he killed his son because the son killed Tarzan's mom, like, hunting. And so Tarzan was like, fuck you, and killed the son. Um, I, I skipped past a part. Insanity. I skipped past a part where it was a flashback of his uh, his dad, who was they did, they wanted Ewan McGregor, but they couldn't afford him, so they got a guy that kind of looked and sounded like him and gave him a beard. So you so like, you were just like, no one notices it's well, yeah. So you, you so like, I mean, I turned to my girlfriend, I'm like, is that Ewan McGregor? 
McGregor? And she's like, I think so. It wasn't. Uh, but he gets brutally murdered within the first, like, half minute he's on screen. And I mean, like, shockingly <laughs> destroyed by a pack of gorillas just pummeling on his back while he's on the ground. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> he, that's what I said. <laughs> And, uh, but then it doesn't, uh, anyway, yeah, later, later on, they all, you know, Margot Robbie gets captured, she's a da- damsel in distress, and, uh, then, uh, so Tarzan's gotta get her back, and Christoph Waltz is being, you know, his character from, uh, from Inglourious Bastards, oh. and, uh, it comes to a head where then the the guy who lost his son forgives Tarzan in a way because he realizes that he can't let Christoph Waltz get away because he's going to destroy he's going to come back and destroy everything, right. and so then uh, you know he saves Margot Robbie he saves the day and Christoph Waltz gets eat, eaten by an alligator, and you know roll credits. Wow, that's an intense movie. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, there weren't any tents; they were mostly huts. Okay. But, uh, were any gorillas killed in the movie? Um, I mean, other yeah, Tarzan's That's mom was one of them. Oh yeah, one, a, a lot of them were shot. Uh, there's a scene where they just uh, unload on a pack of gorillas. Dude, R.I.P. Harambe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they they kept on, and they actually called like five of them Harambe. I think that's what they just called the pa- yeah. No, it's uh, but that's pretty much the movie. Wow. Okay. There was there. I mean, there actually was a lot of. Sh- of violence that I was shocked at. I was, I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, like, I mean, I, I mean, Sam is over here nodding his head at some of the stuff. <laughs> like, when, when that dad got killed by those gorillas, I was shocked. <laughs> I, gorillas do have a tendency to just throttle things with their massive arms, <laughs> and they did not shy away from that Dude, at all in this movie. That's not better than chimpanzees, because their real actual go-to move is they rip off your genitals, right? It's, I think it's, it's like oh, yeah, the yeah. rip off your face. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that one lady that was on Oprah got her face ripped off by Chip Ant. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. So, first question. <laughs> first question, we're going to go to... It was hot. First, first question is going to be going to go to Tyler. And it's the same question for both of you. Uh, what would you have added to or taken away from this trailer to make you have wanted to see it more? Or kept from ruining the movie? Take, what what would I take away from the trailer? Yeah, like it, well, either way, what would you change to the trailer that that would have made your movie going experience better? Like if if they ruined something with the trailer, or if by adding something they would have made uh, you just, just, just a thirty second teaser of it, the dang it and beat to death. I mean, if that's what it, if that I honestly would be very in. I would, but I think that I was expecting more of the story of like Tarzan growing up. And right. that, and so maybe change the trailers a little bit to make it seem that way because I still even after watching the trailers I still thought like oh this is going to be about you know like Tarzan the Disney movie up. Tarzan, yeah. um, but but yeah. I can see that so maybe they shouldn't have called it the Legend of Tarzan yeah because yeah. the legend makes it sound like it's the, the and, and if they showed if they showed a uh, in the trailer a shot of his uh, monkey hands that would have been pretty dope I mean what are you gonna what are you gonna call the movie like the follow up of Tarzan or just <laughs> Rise of <laughs> it, it's already happened so you need to have something the life and post. times <laughs> yeah of I mean, I'm not saying I don't, I'm not saying I have Tarzan. a good thing but like the legend of Tarzan makes me think of like him him going for like she, I don't know right what well, the legend is and in defense him. in defense yes. the movie is about like him being a living legend and not really wanting to continue that life he doesn't really want to be a legend like because people will come up to him and they're like oh Tarzan he's like no my name isn't Tarzan it's Jonathan. So would you have added John that? Connor of the Third House of Dormont? <laughs> it's not Connor. I, I wish it was John, so, John Kimball. <laughs> so would you? Would you have like put in the trailer more stuff about him being out of the jungle? Yeah, made, yeah, yeah. made it clear that mm-hmm. he was. Yeah, and then like was, I like, said, more Pocahontas too. More gorilla knuckles. More gorilla been, knuckles. Yeah, because his have. his bone structure was chain was uh, different because he spent most of his life running on his hands. Oh, thank God. I'm really, only gl- his, I'm really only glad they did <laughs> <laughs> You should have just scrapped the whole thing and just made Encino Man too. Yeah, seriously. I, I definitely would have watched that. <laughs> I mean, that, that that wouldn't qualify for the show because it'd <laughs> yeah, be like at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Charlie, same thing to you. What would you have added to the trailer that would have made you like? What part did you see in that movie and think, man, if this was in the trailer, I definitely would have came to see this without someone telling me to. Okay, <laughs> could, I would have added. Can we turn on a light? By any chance? I feel like it's weird that we're sitting in... Okay, that's... Okay. <laughs> I, I liked it. Pitch black and we're all naked. Mm. 
I would have added a few of the lines from the movie that were directly humorous because these types of movies you go into it assuming like this it's gonna be funny watching these crazy deaths you know in the way certain horror movies are funny but i guess it's not directly intentionally funny but some of the lines in this movie were obvious attempts at jokes and i wish they would have kind of put that in so i would have been more some comic relief yeah for that you thought that the trailer was too serious a lot like you know the joker yeah you were wondering why was it so serious? Okay. Uh huh. Okay. So you are the Heath Ledger. Of the, oh God! Of the wow, brothers, going back to that joke. Pixley. Yeah. Um. And I'm really I, tired, guys. I'll see you tomorrow, probably. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Just <laughs> just make sure to t- if you're that tired, just take like a couple more pills yeah, than normal, yeah. and you should be fine. Those ones activate the ones in me already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is a dark cast. <laughs> No, I just had him turn on the light. It's... Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. So, so, in a movie called The Purge, where everyone's killing each other, mm-hmm. uh, what was your favorite death scene from the movie, Charlie? Ooh. <laughs> okay, I would say... <laughs> Dude, I think, so I think Sam ones. just thought of his favorite <laughs> so death scene. Ooh, can I go over a couple of them real quick? Oh, you? There's one where a dude, like the one of the white supremacist guys whose military jacket on the back just says white power. <laughs> he has all <laughs> swastikas tattooed on his head. So. Multiple swastikas tattooed <laughs> yes, on his, dude, on his like head. Like the eagles and a, yes. <laughs> wow. And a spider web right on his head. He was, you know, fully skinhead. Yeah. One of the guys up in a security house opens up this briefcase, and of course, it's like, do, 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 do. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> it just blows <laughs> up. <laughs> Hilarious stuff like that. There's this one chick just gets owned by a car, and the, uh, one of the other chicks just glances off the side. And they earn the R rating because the one lady has a sawn off shotgun, and she blows around in her head, but they don't cut away at all from it. Holy I mean, crap. They just show Boosh, and I mean, her head just <laughs> full hole just through it. They're just special effects. Just, oh, well, that's, shit. <laughs> that's, that's jarring. But the best one has to be the final conflict killing between <laughs> this, like, this dude who's dressed up in a blue polyester full priest garb, and he's really, like, sickly white. He's a drug addict. Yes. And he just opens the door. So all the heroes are in one room and you think it's over. And he just opens the door and he just walks in with a shotgun. He spins to go shoot somebody. Somebody shoots him in the shoulder. So he like drops the shotgun. And then as he's dropping the shotgun, he just pulls out another gun. <laughs> and he, he's in they're in a room about this big, which is like ten feet by maybe twelve feet. Uh-huh. So he pulls out a gun, full arm extension, and then another dude the gun the one of the heroes pulls out his pistol. And they're about six feet away from each other, fully arms extended, and they're just shooting each other. Just blam, blam, and they just keep lighting each other oh up. Oh my and god! And it is so funny because the dude's like blood is just—it's rated R, so it's yeah. Just, and it's just, he's farting. He's farting yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And they're just lighting they each didn't, other up. So they—they uh, they went all out on the squibs. They didn't hold back <laughs> oh, on. Yeah, dude. <laughs> all of their all of their production budget went directly to blood. Yeah. Yeah. Real blood. They they siphoned it from people. <laughs> That's why it was so expensive to film this film. <laughs> the idea of like having somebody hooked up with like just gallons of squibs that are filled with real blood. Like well, I, finally a worthwhile cause to donate blood. That's, true, why, yeah. that's why I do it. <laughs> to be to be shot all over. Because I don't go to like real I go to places that are dark and rusty. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good time. <laughs> So Sam, Sam, is that your favorite? So I'd say the point blank gun battle. Is that your favorite one, Sam? Yeah, it would have to be the like point blank gun it battle. Like just, a, it was like a thirty second sequence of them just like boom, boom. Like if you were holding up your gun, they'd almost be shooting into each other. They were touching tips. That would have been almost. pretty funny if ooh, touching tips. Yes. The lack of effort in any kind of fight choreography was so impressive. <laughs> there was only one hand to hand fight scene. The rest was just people shooting each other, I think. No, I'm saying in that scene, oh, any yeah. kind of, you can still put choreography in a gunfight. Yeah. They opted out of that. <laughs> and you more doves, too. They said instead of instead of yeah. having anything resembling an accurate gunfight, we'll put more blood in and what if we slow it down a hair go into a little bit of slow motion was kind of their quick fix. Oh, oh, no. really? So this was like, so this well, was a John Woo film. No, it, it's no, not no, slow I enough. Said, just like 
a no, quarter slow. It sounds it sounds a lot uh, it sounds a lot like the uh, the George Lucas method for like the prequels where he just had the people who were playing Jedi's just like fight nothing and it was like we'll just put shit in where they're attacking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so they were just like, like okay, you, you know, guys or, or shoot like at that, each other. You know, and then we'll, or like that blow. guy in the in the Dark Knight Rises in the background who just falls over <laughs> during that oh, Batman yeah. fight. There's like oh, uh, yeah. and you uh yeah yeah just just uh, uh, <laughs> everybody make sure to fall over by the end of this fight and he's oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that guy should have just instead of being like, "Oh crap, I gotta fake something," he should have just clutched his heart and like. <laughs> <laughs> so terrified of Batman. And, you know what you were saying earlier, though, Sam. This might actually represent a more realistic gunfight than most movie gunfights, because the one dude has no gun training, and neither does the other dude, as far as we know. So two people would just be like, <laughs> just, just hold up a gun and shoot each shoot other. him up instead of you know full cover and yeah. you know doing stealthy rolls and stuff. Just blast each other. Yeah, this isn't this isn't Nicholas Cage and uh, John Travolta. We're talking here. This oh is... man, the two most highly trained gun, gun <laughs> yes. fu artists in Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Of course, no, I just love gun fu. <laughs> Have you well, seen Wild Hogs? I was thinking Equilibrium. <laughs> I was also thinking Equilibrium. Not so much Wild Hogs. <laughs> never Wild. I'm never thinking Wild Hogs. <laughs> I mean, they're in the DVD double pack. But what movie is John C. McGinley that gay cop in? What? Yeah, Wild, wild Hogs. I've Wait, never fair enough. Travolta, you said? No, John C. McGinley. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's the only time I'll ever fair enough. think of that movie. Okay. Or wait, or is it Old Hogs? Is it Wild Hogs? No, there's, there's old, old Dogs. No, old Dogs, dogs. Wild oh my God. Hogs. Back, <laughs> back door hussies, nine. <laughs> anyway. So, Tyler, your next question is, of all, I'm sure there were a lot, like, even though there, there wasn't as much, I'm sure that there, you said that there were flashbacks, what was the best scene of Tarzan growing up and learning to be with the animals? And, like, like being out in, in nature as a boy instead of something that can take it. Uh, well, obviously, I would have to go with the scene where he jumps on uh, Jan Jane, 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 Jane uh, and gets pummeled in the back by a gorilla for her. I sense, oh, he I sense her. a theme. Yeah. Uh, yes, Sam. What I, I would I would argue the best scene is actually right before that when he when, first encounters Jane, and she's like that and, dick, she, and sees that dick, but then proceeds to sniff her as sort of a gorilla, mm -hmm. and then he slowly works his Board way human. down to sniff. <laughs> Her, her, her genitalia. Yes. yes. And okay. she has to say, easy, wild boy. Mm -hmm. Pushes him oh, back. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he gets that throttled got, by a girl. That got, that got some uh, laughs from uh, my audience. That's... Okay. Yeah. All right. I got uh, and okay, that, Legend of Tarzan. Well, and part of you wanted the scene to end. Part of you wanted to see how it would have played. <laughs> Two very attractive people. Yeah. Well, and there was that one scene where he was just doing mating calls. Oh, and so the, many mating calls. And... That was very unsettling. How, yo, I'm going to need a real count on um, mating calls. I would say maybe six or seven. I was going to say seven. Ooh. There's literally a scene where she is walking through her old childhood home, and he is just giving different animal mating calls. They start off as birds, and then at one point you hear like a, and she goes, cheetah, mating call, and then he is behind her. <laughs> and then they just fuck. Like, oh, I mean, shit. Yeah, no, it, it was... I was very uncomfortable <laughs> during that scene. I was because like, your pants were so too tight. tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the brothers Pixley back at it again. <laughs> Both it's... thinking about your bone. <laughs> Classic <laughs> brothers Pixley. <laughs> I, clearly, nothing has changed. In the saddle again. <laughs> so yeah, it was a sex-filled romp. How sex? Like, so, like on a... rated G. <laughs> Okay, you know what? We're just moving past. <laughs> I just, I'm not, I'm not really interested in that. Okay. Okay. So for my, uh, for my joke question, you guys are each getting your own today. Uh oh. Uh, I thought about them on the way I'm, here. I don't know if I'm witty enough. Hopefully you are. <laughs> okay. So, so Charlie, you saw the purge, mm -hmm. and for for our real dedicated listeners, they know that in the first episode, I had to watch Meet the Blacks, the Purge parody. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, Charlie, in your movie. Who would you have wanted to see played by Snoop Dogg and Whiteface? <laughs> well, hmm. it's funny either way if you pick the a black cast? person or a white person. <laughs> That's true. 
So clearly, if he's a black person, then he would have to be Snoop Dogg in whiteface, in blackface. Either the <laughs> leader of the, the white supremacist group. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that'd be pretty funny. And if it was a like, if it was a De Chappelle type character oh, yeah. where he was Regular a, he was Tosh. actually a black guy, but he just put whiteface on. Yeah, <laughs> that would have made his reveal when he takes off all his gear much more impressive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking like Clayton Bigsby style? Yes, yes. That's what oh. I was that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Or or if he still played the female version of well, the normal version of the senator who they're protecting throughout the whole movie, but they don't change the script at all. So like, lady, we gotta get you out of here. <laughs> And I Snoop think, I th- yeah. I no, think. well, see, I would like Snoop Dogg to rewrite all of her dialogue in that case. It's like, we got to get you out of here. Shizzle. Yeah, he, he can write his. I'm not a they lady. Just keep yeah, they just keep addressing him as a woman. Okay, all right. So, Tyler, for you, since you watched The Legend of Tarzan, mm-hmm. I don't know, this might be a difficult one. Which I don't know. character would you like Snoop Dogg in my face to I was actually going to say, which song in the movie would you like to have rewritten by Phil Collins? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 oh, man, really? Yeah, I don't think there's... there's too many mating calls. <laughs> yeah, the mating calls are all... So you want Phil Collins <laughs> yeah, to remake I, no, I want, I want, is kind of a mating I want call. Phil, I want Phil Collins with the band Genesis to redo all the, all the mating calls. Okay, I... I like that. <laughs> and that would be funny if Tarzan, the last one, was just... <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think I think we're on to, to final thoughts. Oh, I got I haven't even like oh. started on my notes yet. Okay, they well just, then they're kind of like the things where like Medea I just wrote down yeah, right yeah, yeah, things yeah. that happen. Okay, so uh, I will open it up to to notes and general comments, and then we'll go into final thoughts. Okay, okay. yeah, I mean, I, yeah, go for it, Chuck. I got this, no notes. So this movie starts out with this family that's all tied down on this couch, and they're all bloody and stuff. And you see this guy sitting on a couch across from them, and he has this mask on that has a felt tongue. Not a svelte tongue, just a felt <laughs> tongue <laughs> I'd be- tacked down to his chin and two huge googly eyes. And he's just shaking his head, and he's like, <laughs> so who's going to die first? Mommy has to decide... And- it was if it, if it weren't for the googly eyes, it would have been really disturbing. Yeah. But the, <laughs> the googly eyes, so we were laughing our asses off just at that part at the very beginning. Uh, let's see. They got to they got a whole lot of the usage out of hands up, don't shoot from the white supremacists and stuff. And it's like, oh, landed on real thick in mm. this movie. Uh, the word, I think. That well, that's a flashback. That's that's the senator's family that's tied up on the couch and stuff. I think the. Th- how far, how close is that? Cunt is the fifth spoken word in this movie <laughs> out of present day dialogue. And it's also used again within the next five words. And I think cocksucker and fuck are probably used more than... Interchangeably? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so much in this movie. I even told Sam, like, this movie makes me want not want to not curse as much anymore. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just hammered in full mm. uh, when the side plot that merges with the main plot it's like these store owners that help ending up protect the senator when they first see her on tv and she's like i'm against the purge the first thing the probably the third main guy in the movie says is she got some little titties but she got some big ass balls i'm like okay well here we go <laughs> <laughs> Strap, <laughs> <it's> strapped <laughs> in and ready to go <laughs> and there were like two other women in there and they're like oh, you're so crazy <laughs> and then they, they talk, then they're like, so-and-so, you're not even paying attention. It's just an old man sitting at a, uh, like, a diner table in the little, like, 7-Eleven type store. And he goes, huh? And they're like, what you thinking about? And it's all really bad, like, stereotypical dialogue. And he just goes, waffles and pussy. <laughs> and they all laugh like, oh. Oh, oh crazy. And he dead serious goes, fuck you laughing at <laughs> Like it is, like it is real for him. You can testify to no, it. It's very real. It's, it's true. And they also bring it up later in the film. With like, driving down and driving down the street. Like, well, what do you think old man Rufus would say about this? Probably just think about waffles and pussy. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Classic Rufus Rufus. is assuredly dead, by the way. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, a funny part of the movie, at least. 
in the beginning they're doing all the news reports and apparently on purge day now like tourists from other countries like to travel to america to purge like, yes like it, ha 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 diplomatic immunity murder purge. vacation <laughs> yes it's murder vacations they call them the people are like oh america's the best we're here to you know murder and blah 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 and stuff i would not want to go to a place i am unfamiliar it, with yeah to try like while like, everybody you don't know is killing them. everyone i would definitely if you're doing that you have to go in like two months beforehand and like start setting up camp <laughs> okay i think this movie actually is uh, probably more offensive to black people than Meet the Blacks was. Uh, that would be that very stuff. difficult. But I mean, I there's a part you. where <laughs> somebody says something and the main dude's like, that's like the pot calling the kettle brown. It's like, oh. Jeez, oh, <laughs> what was it when the? It's not even trying. They're riding in a van. They st- the, like the van stops for some reason. There's a big group of uh, black people fighting in the streets and they start walking up to the van They're like oh shit what are we gonna do what are we gonna do and the uh, the little black guy in the movie just goes <whistles> and then the banging on the van stops and he's like it's an old crip whistle that means i'm a crip and their crips do and they won't hurt us and he opens up the van door he's like we ain't gonna hurt you and they all got their guts and shit it's like oh my god wait and they actually didn't hurt him yeah no nope. oh they man actually that would have been so funny if they just shot him right as he <laughs> opened that take door their orders to then go fight the white supremacists oh well, what did he say right before that oh hold on so this huge group of black people are walking up to the van and the black dude says we got a whole oh, fuck so we got a whole got bunch of Negroes coming up to this van like we're a big ass bucket of fried chicken. I'm oh like, my oh. god! <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Come on, people! <laughs> Yikes! Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> There's and the, and it's total like white savior senator. You know she's all perfect. She's like, I'm gonna help you guys. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like white hope. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And she has them all make like fill out these journals and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's freedom I'm writers. Kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> there is a line though. I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes, but uh, Crossbones is like, "You're not going out there alone. I'll give you a gun, but you're not helping." She's like, "I'm helping you." He goes over my. What does he say? Like, oh, he says over my dead body, and she just goes, "Well, then you better drop dead." <laughs> 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 and he's he was like, like okay <clears throat> like you can go <laughs> i mean like just take the gun and be like yeah i won't help and then when you die i'm going to need to i'm gonna need to do something the main dudes or the third main dude who's really racist <laughs> i guess it sounds he's, like that's just the majority like of the characters of, no that's not like the one dude for the okay, most part the waffles right. and pussy thing is just weird but he says good night blue cheese is his like catch favorite children's book i don't know oh. if that means anything but uh no, yeah, like I blue mean, cheese and pajamas, that whole <laughs> old children's tale. Well, I was, I was saying like good night moon, but good night oh, blue yeah. cheese. <laughs> yeah, he definitely says blue cheese. I was like, Sam, did he say blue cheese? I said yes, but he says it again at the end of the movie when. So there's the other person that's running for president against the senator is pro purge, and he's like, yeah, we need to keep doing right. all this and stuff. So they have him tied up and they have the opportunity to kill him, but they don't want to because then he becomes a martyr and all that stuff. So instead, he just takes him and like punches him in the nuts really hard, which is inherently funny. And the guy's like, good night, blue cheese. (laughs) All right. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay. Oh, and the store owner, there's so many just little things. The store owner stops two girls from robbing him in the beginning, like stealing some candy bars. And she's so mad that he caught them stealing the candy bar that she comes back later with probably two cars and probably eight people with gold plated AK 47s. And she, her lines are seriously like this I want my candy bar, you fucking cocksucker. It's like, holy shit. She and really likes candy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, cocksucker is said so many times in this podcast. It's this, uh, unbelievable. In the podcast or the movie? Yeah, More in, in this movie. podcast, yeah. that I'm saying it so much because in the movie, they probably said it 10 times. I don't remember how many uh, times I've said it so far. The, so this isn't really fair because I she thought we picked... on the camera too. It was gross. I thought we picked non-comedy. And it seems like uh, Charlie it, it was... It was not re- billed as comedy. I will <laughs> say that. <laughs> it failed. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's now for my... Yeah, for your oh. notes. Uh, you're, you can do notes on either I was uh, just gonna... Legend of Tarzan or Star Trek. I mean... <laughs> What part did you miss? When did you go to the bathroom? I yeah. went to the bathroom when they uh, they charged the train. 
So when when they're like, let's go to the train, and Samuel Jackson jumps on the branches with them, and they like swing through. He, Madeline said, my girlfriend Madeline said that it was one vine that they like continuously swung on for the longest amount of time, and then landed on top of the train and like they started fighting people on the train and I showed up like right when they were inside the train and there was a guy who was like half out of the train and half in the train and Tarzan just kicks some dude out of the side of the train um and then uh yeah that's so I, you, yeah so you know those those like comics or the movies Spider-Man when he's swinging mm-hmm. on a on a web and you're like nah yeah that, yeah, that's what that was. Uh, and then he just he gets, jumped off the Great Pyramid and just swung across the desert. <laughs> yeah, in that scene, he, he does have Sam Jackson, clearly, he doesn't know the jungle, mm-hmm. so he grabs a vine that immediately just breaks down, and so he says, all right, hop on my back. And then he hops on his back and he goes, legs too. And you can just tell Sam Jackson wants to be like, motherfucker. <laughs> but then he heists well, his little tiny old man legs up on his back and they swing to victory. Well, that reminds me of one part of the movie when he has to, Tarzan has to fight his uh, old brother. Well, you know, whatever, stepbrother kind of thing. The gorilla brother. Yeah. And uh, he has he to fight him. because gorilla? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm hundred... glad they did that. <laughs> <laughs> he, yes. I'm actually, I'm really surprised that, was another that you scene... guys responded positively to my question. There was That was another scene where he just got pummeled in the back by a gorilla he was just on the ground and the gorilla was just wailing they on will him. never attack your um front. and then he and then he went toward the gorilla like goes towards sam jackson and uh you know um scars guards like uh you kneel before him you know and i thought i thought he was gonna do the uh, i thought he was gonna do the i thought he was gonna do the hand <laughs> into the AIDS. i immediately did that margot robbie does it yeah she did but they didn't give her the they didn't give her permission she she put her hand out for the permission and they never they never swiped it. That's why shit went down. That's Sucks. true. That's the gunfire. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so he's 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 like, no, you gotta now put your you know hands up or something like like be oh expose your vulnerable parts is what he says. He's like expose your most vulnerable parts. And he's like like show submission. Oh, yeah. And he's like oh yeah. And then he goes now lick his nuts. No, 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 no. Sam Jackson says... <laughs> he looks at him under his legs, like, so the camera shot shows, like, the ape's back, and then you see Sam Jackson's head... And he's, like, under the legs. You want me to lick his nuts or something? And Skarsgård... I mean, this was after he was pummeled by a gorilla. Yeah. He's still laying on the ground, and he goes, it wouldn't hurt, or something <laughs> like that. And Sam Jackson's like... And then, wink! <laughs> and then the gorilla just leaves, and he was like... Huh. And Skarsgård's like, huh, you were gonna do it. It's like, dude, you just got mauled by a gorilla. Why are you making jokes? <laughs> you shouldn't be able to stand right now. After after the, he goes, it, it, it couldn't hurt. They should have shown the gorilla walking out of the room, like smoking a cigarette or something. Then pretending as if it were to yeah, happen. Yeah. And then, then got to him and like, oh, I would have done it. Yeah, that would have made me. Uh, and I mean, Sam Jackson is clearly he's a doctor and he knows how to work in the jungle because he uh, stitches up. Uh, is he a doctor? I thought he was. Wasn't he? I, I guess. Yeah, he is. He's Dr. George Washington Williams. They call him Dr. Williams in the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I really liked, uh, I thought Idris Elba did a great job as the villain. Um, and, you know, the surprising twist at the end of, like, his connection to the Enterprise <laughs> and, uh, you know, how he, uh, you know, and, and after the whole Into Darkness debacle, it was nice to <laughs> have a... Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Dude, the after um, credit scene with Zoe Deschanel's older sister, though, coming back for the last time. <laughs> I love Bones, dude. No. <laughs> I, I picked up that one. I did not. I, I, there, I was hoping for a resurrection of uh, John Francis Daly. <laughs> you, said, you said Zoe Deschanel, and my mind thought Zoe Zaldana, who's in oh. Star Trek. So, I was, oh, so I, was, I was confused about an after credit scene. Um, anyway, I yeah, see it though, right? Tarzan is, Tarzan is, is bonkers. It's pretty, like, I mean. Okay, yeah. in that, in the trailer, there was that scene where, the, like, I, I don't know if this was the train attack scene, but there was one where it looked like a bunch of animals, like, mm, just charged that's, through. That's the, that's the climax. Like, okay. What are those, wildebeests yeah, or something? Me, yeah, yeah, they're wildebeests. Yeah, that, uh, they, that's they that, kill Mufasa. Well, see, they, uh, the, uh, Christoph Waltz is about to meet up with this army, and he's gonna pay them in those diamonds that he got. I thought and you were gonna say those wildebeests. <laughs> <laughs> paying them in full in wildebeests. No, and uh, how many is that in wildebeest? <laughs> what's the what's the transact? What's the uh, transfer? The 
I don't know. Anyway, I couldn't. Cur- exchange rate? Yeah, exchange rate. There we go. Thank you, Sam. Um, uh, <laughs> so the in the, they're at that uh, like town w- waiting for the – oh, no, no, no. The army boats are like waiting outside of the town, and he's just got to like go out there and meet up and be like, here's the diamonds, and I'll go Drop attack go attack everything. And then Tarzan shows up, and he's like, wildebeest attack. And the wildebeest just charge through the whole city and just – like kill everybody um yeah, i mean it looks pretty brutal i mean yeah. there, there's there are people like playing cards yeah, on a that, deck that, that and just like <laughs> like getting getting pummeled yeah. by wildebeest that's that's why i asked about it because i just remember vividly in the in the trailer just like guys having tea and yes just shit falling apart keep, around them <laughs> keep in mind at this point we have a situation where after earlier making fun of sam jackson because he asked tarzan so can you talk to animals and he's like what do you think you're a doctor and then he proceeds to go talk to yes. all the species of animals yes. and get them to work together for this. <laughs> yes. Going to attack 20,000 mercenaries who have sailed 20, from, 20, 000, who have sailed from Europe to Africa without accepting payment yet. Yes. So we have two totally unrealistic <laughs> combatants <laughs> headed right at each other. Just very trustworthy. And then, Trusting. And then there's like, you know, a boat explodes. Uh, and, and yeah, Christoph Waltz gets eaten by an alligator. Uh, it's pretty. Oh, oh! Tarzan gets is getting choked by a necklace, and he breaks it with his neck. He just oh. like flexes enough, and it ends Dude, up breaking. Honestly, <laughs> that was pretty. I awesome. didn't know, like somebody was holding it on his neck. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When you first said, it, I was, I was like, like, I don't understand. Like, like, he doesn't know how to work. <laughs> I thought he just, he, like, 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 it I thought he just had it on. Like, <laughs> no. It's uh, Christoph Waltz's weapon of choice is a rosary kind of thing made, made out, out of like Madagascar yeah. spider silk. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he can like whip it around like fucking daredevil. Yeah. And Jesus. chokes people with it. Yeah. That's actually kind of sweet. I mean, of course. <laughs> no, no, it, no, it's not because the rest of the time he's just no, Christoph Sam. Waltz. It's sweet. Oh yeah, you're right. Whoops. When's, the, when's that part of this podcast happen? Uh, right, soon. right now. It's so it's so edgy. Uh, there is one more little part. This will only take a second. Early on in the movie, Frank. Uh, my well, well, not, okay. not Frank. Oh, uh, are you are you done? Because yeah, then, then we're going into final thoughts. This yeah. is just like ten seconds. Crossbones get shot in the shoulder, and later on, I'm like, oh, dude, Sam, that was probably a tracking bullet, you know, and like. Midway through the movie, they're like, how are they still finding us? And Crossbones pulls out his little clamps. He's like, hold on. And he pulls out this still fully formed bullet with like a blue light ring around the it's end. Well, <laughs> yeah. On it is like, what if, <laughs> perfect. The only way they could have been better is bullet. if they were in like a dark room and there was just like a light blue light. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is that? And he like, trace it back to the bullet hole. <laughs> it's got a mic in it. <laughs> or if, only, if the people the that had caught it were the crips. Like, you got a trafficking bullet in you? Yeah. <laughs> or, no, or like, or they crips find them, and it's like, they're like, oh, you're blue, you're crip too, cool. And he's like, leave. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, those are my. I, I mean, were they, those your final thoughts, pretty much? Yeah, and then, yeah okay. so uh, I just forgot that one thing. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no problem. Okay. So uh, after all of that, I'm probably gonna have to go with Charlie on nah, this one. I knew it. I knew it. Well, you did confuse <laughs> it with another movie, which. <laughs> Which gave a real strong sentiment for yours. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, um, it's mainly because my movie was so forgettable. It was, and it wasn't level of like tempt forgettable, where it's like it was just such an average film. You're like, eh. no, it was just like bad. It was, it, well, it was not like awful bad, where you're like, oh man. This part was so shitty. This it was just so it was bad enough that you're like, uh, what even happened in this film? And you know they did that. Tr- I'm tired of that. You know whole damsel in distress type trope and how they try to make it where it's like, well, she's actually tough though. She can hold her own, but she can't. She's she just, threw a punch. I mean, she's essentially you know the fridge and the I mean the head in the fri- freezer trope, but just she yeah she throws a punch or two she spits on a guy yeah she spits on christoph waltz and that's like her being tough (laughs) but but she is literally just it might be she's just motivation (laughs) she's just motivation for tarzan to get at christoph waltz for the entire movie essentially yeah get at him (laughs) um uh and it was just yeah star trek beyond though was pretty pretty fun we should all go see that I, i'll see it again it's probably the better star I trek movie I, I do agree with tyler that this movie was just so flatlined like it wasn't 
I don't think it was horrible. I thought there were some good moments from like a couple. Of, I think Skarsgård did a good job of um, physically acting. Yeah, he kept his hands in like kind of that monkey pose mm-hmm. for a good chunk of it. Just kind of like his man- right. mannerisms are really good. But I'm if you're done with that trope, I'm done with the trope of it's not even a trope. It's just Christoph Waltz. Yeah, he's, he's just playing an overconfident businessman villain. Yeah. All the time. Dude, Pretty but much. this movie had so much hype. And, <laughs> and I mean, I genuinely enjoyed when his dad got mauled by those gorillas. Because I mean, that was just a shot. Um, like but of one of the things that was I left out a little bit, because it was insane to me, was how Sam Jackson stitched up uh, Skarsgård in the wild after he got cut from the gorilla fight mm-hmm. is he took carpenter ants. Okay, uh, I like where this is going. And and just held them near the the, oh, the open. They something? pinched the thing and then That's he just stupid. peeled off their body so their head it was just sitting. And so scar like I mean he walks around the rest of the movie with visible ant heads. That's, that's, his, that's not the first time that's unsanitary. happened. That's happened in the, another movie. Did that? And I really? Can't remember what it is? Yes. I I mean yep, that does sound too electric boogaloo. Yeah, the classic jungle movie. Always, <laughs> always breaking too. Yeah, I mean, and it was Never just so. Uh, oh, and if you thought it, Charlie, if you thought those wildebeests running was terrible CGI, there is an ostrich in the film Ooh. that I thought was a video game. Like from PlayStation DKC Two, one? like it was Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Country. 1. Oh, it, it probably like I mean, and this was a hey, this movie is in three D. Remember, uh, moment because the, it's just the ostrich and he's like pecking at I the hate, camera. I hate oh. those and those three D. Like you remember these three D moments. I mean, that scene didn't really mean anything, and those ostriches looked so bad. And then same with that when he ran into those tigers. I mean, that scene was so stupid. It was literally just them walking through and then he ran into them and hugged them and she goes, he knew them since they were cubs. And then the scene ended. It was so like, heartless. <laughs> They're fucking lions, man. <laughs> Wait, are they lions They're or lions. tigers? They're lions. Yeah, they were lions. They were lions. And they were female lions, weren't they? just a rip off they? that YouTube video, though. Yeah, it is where the lion jumps at the guy and hugs him. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're, what you're saying is they're going to YouTube for their scripting. It was it was pretty funny at the beginning when it fu- shows the epic. For my script. It shows the epic uh, <laughs> Legend of Tarzan, you know, uh, title. It's like you know the music's, yeah. and then you see in the corner registered trademark <laughs> next next to Tarzan. Like it's just, just ooh, that really breaks up the whole scene. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, there just wasn't really. I had no connection to these characters. I it. It just felt weird, and it it sounds like it was like a super weird software porn at times. They tried to use a miscarriage to like make you feel for the character. Oh shit! Jane I forgot a, about that miscarriage, and that's like kind of put a little divide in them. And when but, they meet the but tribe, not even there's a bunch of little babies, and the the African ladies are like, "Do you have a child?" And she's like. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, I wow. totally forgot about that. That was such a little thing, though. They were just like. Let's oh, just make this happen. It was because she wanted to go with him to Africa, and he was like, no, because you just lost that a baby. Let's just pile on. <laughs> you're right, though. It wasn't even like, no, you just lost a baby. It was like, we've already lost a child. Yeah. You shouldn't have stress. And her almost literal response is just, wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this this movie, but Star Trek yes. Beyond. I mean, I can talk about that oh, if you yeah. want. Uh, I also saw Fundamentals of Caring, a Netflix original film with uh, Paul Rudd, which was fantastic. I was actually thinking about checking that out. Do because so because I'm almost done with uh, Stranger Things. Mm, wanted to, wanted to do that tonight. We uh, should watch The Purge. <laughs> oh yeah, Not well this one though. <laughs> the first Purge is. Maybe I've seen one. the first Purge. The first Purge isn't bad. It's Maybe all right. This one. Okay, Maybe, so so real real thoughts, Charlie. Uh, how did I sum it up to you on the way home? Okay, so. I feel like The Purge, as a concept, is a great shtick for a movie, but they didn't play on it enough. This one actually had a fully-fledged story to it, that made sense relative to the universe, but I guess I just didn't really care that much about that s- the story. I want to see this 12-hour window of Purge time and just madness. I was expecting this to be closer to like Saw level, which still had a good story, but it is consistently just boom, it do- boom, it, boom, boom, boom. I know, the, I know for a fact the saw is like really ramp up the aggressiveness so <laughs> yeah. as they go hey, on. Yeah. Hey, hey, to always defend saw, watch all of them. 
it's an incredible story. Oh no, uh, I, I I genuinely I like the first two the, the, saws. I, I haven't. I've only seen I've the seen first like one. Five, I really I like the first one, but I did, from the reason I stopped watching them was because. Uh, it looked like a lot of just gore for gore's sake, but then I heard they really do bring yeah. it all back together in a if, really good way. If there was a cut that took out like the gory moments, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I genuinely thought that, the first two Saw movies were really good. I think good. the first one's held <laughs> well, pretty like, no, I, well. The first one's right. amazing, but uh, I, I just remember seeing the trailer for the second one and a person falling into a pit of hypodermic needles. Ah, yes. uh, yep. and, and I was just like, nope. Well, that's not even the, that's not even the worst one in that, because there's one in that one, there's like a key inside of a box, and he's like, oh, I just got to get it, and he puts his hand inside the box, but it's when he brings his arm out, it's like glass shards. That the the hole that he puts it through, like it I, yeah, goes up, saying. and then when he comes back down, it's almost kind of it like, uh, like yeah, yeah, thing that you're not supposed to pull it out. Yeah, it's so like finger cuffs, but with yeah, yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. So the never look back. <laughs> but uh, Jokes on you, jigsaw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, saw's saw's fine. Uh, purge, the first purge was good. It is good, yeah. yeah. And Charlie, you would like the first two because that is more what the the, the issue with this one for me was that instead of being, I didn't see the first two. instead of being not He's saying great. you would like oh, them. It was yeah, I do want to see this. I love me some It Hall. insisted on trying to pull its plot together. It tried so it it had such a fucking message the whole time. Like yeah. the, the new founding fathers were not Republicans, we're totally Republicans. The NRA is funding all this. Like, okay, it's, uh-huh. It had too big of trying to shove this message up your ass. Yeah. And, and, and it just. It and the white hope thing it. was like, oh my God. Hey, yeah. but it's a pretty white lady with. Thick rimmed glasses, and she holds a homeless <laughs> person's hand in like yeah. the hospital. And, like, she goes we'll into the this. crowd when she when they have a debate. Uh, yeah. and, and, and then does she have hand. hot sauce like, in her purse? <laughs> does Lex Luthor ever? Not until leave she's her asked feet? about it. Yeah. <laughs> does who? Does Lex Luthor ever leave her a jar of urine? No. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah, it's just just dis- just disappointing. Like, but the moments that were like the waffles and pussy thing was like it was unexpected. It was shocking, though. Yeah, that was the most shocking moment. <laughs> the shotgun stuff too. But that only that lady directed, see coming. That action scene is like what I expected the whole movie to be. And then there is one where this dude is just burning uh, his dead body, is just on fire, and this old lady's just sitting there singing as they're walking through the street. Just crazy stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff. That's like I, Bioshock I don't know if type. I was wanting to see it or expecting to see it or a little bit of both, I guess. That's what well, I was thinking. Well, the issue is, is like with the first two, people weren't completely, sorry, people weren't completely psychotic. Like, like they, they, had, they, they wore had masks so that they couldn't see or they were killing people because they didn't like somebody or, or they were just murdering yeah. people to murder people. But now every single person that's a killer is dressed up as George Washington. And after they're killing people, they're like having a circle jerk dancing in the streets, yeah. like shaking. Because the whole story of the first one is uh-huh. the guy was homeless. So they're like, we need to kill him because he's homeless. That's yeah, like that group. They're not do. they're not crazy. They're just like, hey, release that guy because. He's oh, just so, a dirge so to society. In the first one, and the, they're using the purge as like, okay, here's how we clean up the town. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then he gets into a rich family's home, and those purge people are pissed about it. And so they decide to fuck that. Hey, we're going to get into this family's house. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ethan Hawke. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So just <laughs> you're sinking the ship when you're trying to get too strong of a message. Right. Yeah. Oh, I get you. Unless that message is. Uh, I did like this one, though. The. The second main lady runs like a medic van around town. She helps people out. She just feels like so that's the right thing to, to do. Yeah. So they have this one dude in there who has been shot. She's taking care of him. Some <laughs> this one time later, the like the heroes in the group get on the van and they're saying, like, who the hell is this guy? Because the the main bodyguard of the senator has to know everybody they're with, like. Yeah, to get an idea to scope out the situation. Who the hell is this guy? And she's like, he's a gang member who was just involved in a gang fight where they all killed each other and stuff. But he's a good boy. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Come on. You're, like, you're trying so hard. Like He just killed people and he's in a gang. <laughs> but he's a good boy. Like, he's pure of heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh. 
Don't worry, he dies. <laughs> Almost <laughs> immediately. Oh, yeah. Uh, the white supremacists have access He's to pure like, of heart. Oh, well, let's find white out. White supremacists have access to a helicopter that's like way more advanced than an Apache gunner. Yeah. Like, this thing is beast they, mode. Like, straight like, from the Independence like, Day resurgence set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Uh, and they have a minigun. They light up this van just completely, you know, there's light streaming in all throughout the sides. And the dude that's strapped to the gurney is the only one that gets killed or hit, even. Like, is everybody okay? Okay, the dude's just dead. You go, oh my god, he's dead, and then they just. I don't okay. even think they take his body. So, so what I'm hearing is, is I made the correct choice. Yeah, but I mean, just yeah, barely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that sounds like almost every single week. Yeah. <laughs> that's a summary. That's, that's a real good point. <laughs> I mean, just the last one, it was a tie because <laughs> they both sounded so equally yeah. dumb. Dull. Yeah, dull. Yeah. Uh, Good. I mean, yeah, yeah, tell. Yeah, well, tell. I mean, anything else to say, guys? I, I think I think that about covers it. Uh, I mean, you, go, Sam, you are on a podcast, correct? You have, yeah. you're, you're a host of uh, the a podcast that is not this one. A podcast that's in the network, though, the Three Sister, Wise yeah, Media Sister, Sister Schools. So, yeah, Sister Podcast. Yeah. That's three, uh, three Wise Radio or Three Wise uh, Guys or Three Wise. We're something. Through Eyes Media? We'll throw it out. I hear yeah, Through Eyes Media a lot. Yeah, yeah you can look it. us up. I've God, I, sh- I should know this. Um, <laughs> that's every Monday, correct? A yes. new episode comes out every Monday? Yes, every um, Monday. Yeah, and so check that out. Uh, also, <laughs> also uh, check out our Facebook page and our Twitter page at Movie Versus Podcast. Uh, thanks to Jeremy Lamb for the theme song. Check out our sexy cover photo again. If oh, you've yeah. already seen it, go look at it again. Yeah, just stare <laughs> at it for a few minutes. Uh, I mean, other than that, uh, do we have anybody else to thank? Thanks to Three Wise. I think us. Thank thanks Just to us, us all in general. Yeah, I think we should give ourselves yeah, a pat on the back. Thank, thank you back. to the listeners who keep coming back despite us talking. <laughs> yeah, yes, thank true. You. And, uh, I wanted to thank you guys for uh, for letting me be on, and Tyler, you in particular. Feel free to cut this out, but I did get you a little something uh, in honor oh. of horrible movies. Oh, so if you see that Coles uh, bag right over it's, there, it's, it's herpes. You it's want to go in there? I don't know if you have this, but you probably don't need it. But I found it and thought of you. Oh my God. It, it is herpes. <laughs> the Howard the Duck soundtrack on vinyl. In near mint condition. This is amazing. I love you even else. more than I already did, Sam. It's something else that you can't have signed by that guy. By Ed Gale? <laughs> well, I'm, I'll say his name. I don't care. That, means, I, that man is creepy. I legitimately <laughs> Who is not remember Tyler <laughs> knows the, the, fuck it, the midget that played Howard the Duck. The little person. You know him personally? Yes, gender. Uh, Almost? I mean, kind of. We had extensive conversations on Facebook. This is, this is not. And this is not. Okay. Yeah. Did you find him or did he find this you? Is, this, is, this is an off-air conversation. What? Uh, maybe maybe a story for another time. But Howard the Duck uh, as a character is all. That's close. hilarious. <laughs> Howard the Duck is a character close to me in many ways. <laughs> this is, this and is wants for... to be closer. This is for okay. movie versus... <laughs> so, just to answer dark. the question, did you find him or did he find you? I, I found him because oh, I... shit, if he found you. I went, <laughs> that would have been crazy. No, because I, I looked up uh, who who had played him and I found... Out of the list I of found 20. His, I found his uh, Facebook page and I was like, oh, hey, I'm going to shot in the dark, send a message to this like fan Facebook page to see if he's going to be at any conventions or something like that, or if I could just mail him some like the poster that I have for him to sign. Sure. And he responded in length... About uh, about how he would love to, you know, sign whatever, and then he added me on his personal Facebook page, and then continued to message me every single night, constantly, and I'm talking like 1 a.m. Uh, messages. Come over. And every single thing he says, you should just reply, huh? Dot dot dot. Small world. <laughs> <laughs> so do you foresee in your future him showing up at your doorstep and uh, just knocking on the door, drunk? It's, so you like the duck, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, with the whole like team of bodyguards who is going to hold me down. Why would he need that? He's got the quack foo. That's true. <laughs> he w- he learned the quack foo for the role. Sam, uh, you should have put your vinyl copy of Never Gonna Get You or uh, Rick Astley's <laughs> song in there. Could have. It's a, it's a Rick Roll Me. Oh, no, it's been so be long. Yet. That's true. Uh, well, other than that, I guess... Uh... Other than that jaunt down memory lane. <laughs> yeah, Please seriously. keep that and censor it. <laughs> <laughs> really, I think that would be so funny. Just five minutes at the end of the podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so this creepy mother... <laughs>
His name is Boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Three Wise Radio!